After a difficult week, the worst in the past month, the S&P 500 dropped below its 200-day average. With the storms brewing, technical selling increased stock losses. The three major U.S. indexes, the S&P 500, Dow Jones Industrials, and Nasdaq 100, declined over the week, reaching two-week lows. This in itself is not a huge issue, individual stocks and their indexes go up and down all the time. The key is, after the summer weakness and entering the earnings season, let's look at what's pushing the markets down. Then what could save the markets? If looking for gold as an indicator, the gold price rose to a 10-week high. Investors are looking for safe haven assets. Gold is one of these assets, along with U.S. Treasury bonds. There are three to four storms brewing for the U.S. stock markets. First off, traders want to see stocks go up and down. Literally playing cat and mouse. No problem, intraday trends can be and are set by market movements. Intraday traders can profit from this. But while market volatility is mean reversing, most daily price movements are random. Thus, I am talking to stock investors. Investors are market participants who have an investment horizon of at least 12 months. Stock investors with a time horizon of at least to the end of 2024. These investors must invest in stocks with a total return, price plus dividends, of at least 8%. For stocks rated on higher valuation multiples, Thus the P.E. ratio, price to sales or price to free cash flow the specific equity market risk premium must be higher. Over 12% total return would be a start. Thus, the major tech stocks in particular, the Magnificent 7, must be producing a total return of 12%. Stock investors do have legitimate concerns over their return prospects. What's pushing the stock markets down and what are the potential remedies? The first and most important issue facing stock investors are the rising yields on U.S. Treasuries in particular at the long end of the U.S. yield curve. It is important to keep in mind, with regard to the long end of the U.S. yield curve, interest rates are expected to increase, they are still turbulent. In 2024, the yield curve in the U.S. should invert. Thus, short-term interest rates could come down. But this is not where the real action will be for stocks. This will be at the long end of the yield curve, where there could be an increase of 100 basis points or even more. The second is that after the terrorist attacks in Israel, The third is the broader issue around the U.S. economy. Then the fourth is selecting a Speaker of the House of Representatives. I thought this one would have been easy. Cutting to the chase, without overcomplicating the situation are the following. Rising yields will be earnings. So far, the earnings season has been solid. The bulk of third quarter corporate earnings reports have exceeded expectations. This is actually quite normal. Remember it is better to exceed expectations, always. Thus, a positive for stocks. Of the 86 S&P 500 companies which have reported earnings so far. In total, 74% have outperformed consensus estimates. The earnings season will continue this week. Major tech stock in the NASDAQ 100 to report are Google, Intel, Microsoft and Meta. Major industrial stocks scheduled to report are Dow, Boeing and Coca-Cola. About a larger Middle East conflict than the Israeli confrontation with Hamas. There are increasing concerns from around the world that the current conflict could turn into a larger Middle East conflict. Wars are terrible and of course totally unpredictable. Look at the war in Ukraine, the situation after 18 months. Remember the special military operation was expected to last one week. So easy to say but obviously harder to achieve with the current situation. That's to contain the current crisis and hopefully bring a resolution. Then on the US economy. The clear message to the Fed is do not overdo it. While inflation is trending down, so a positive. The real issue is price instability, so inflation or deflation. The long-term trajectory for the American economy is strong, but do not kill the economy. Even if a mild recession does ever occur, the Fed won't lower interest rates before the middle of 2024. A rise in the Fed funds rate by plus 25 basis points at the next FOMC meeting is not anticipated by the markets. A plus 25 basis points rate hike at the following meeting of the FOMC, which concludes on December 13. The markets expect around a 30% possibility of a rate rise. Into 2024, in reaction to a forecasted slowdown in the US economy, the markets believe that the FOMC will start cutting rates. This likely to be more into the second half of 2024. About the election of a new speaker, only time will tell. The current situation is not good for the U.S. stock and the situation internationally. The Euro stocks 50 finished minus 1.61%. Shanghai Composite Index in China fell minus 0.74% and the Nikkei 225 in Japan finished down minus 0.54%. All the graphs in this video are by bar chart. If you are thinking of subscribing to bar chart, my affiliate link is in the comments. 
Also included are my affiliate links to the online brokers, eToro, First Trade, and FX Primus. These videos, give a quick overview of the US stock markets with a couple of stock ideas. Issued on Mondays and Fridays based on the underlying blog. Visit my blog site www.smartestdata.blog. If you like these videos, hit like and subscribe, it really does help the channel. See you in the next video.